Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Marla Hiller. I'm a senior studying international relations in the College of Arts and Sciences. And this is my project, A Wicked Problem, a podcast about school segregation in Boston. And my advisor was Professor Ann Donahue in the journalism department. So I just want to start off kind of explaining my motivation behind the podcast. So like I said, I'm an international relations major. So I've taken a lot of social sciences classes. And a large portion of these classes is really about public policy. So I've read a lot of policy memos that are backed by a lot of research. Overall things I think could be great ideas and great solutions. And then inevitably, either the policy fails when it's implemented on the ground, or it's never even implemented at all. And so this has been very frustrating to me as a college student because these ideas seem so good and they're backed by really good research, but they just never seem to work out. So I wanted to focus my senior project on it. But obviously, public policy is a massive space. So enter Common Ground by J. Anthony Lucas, which is a book that follows three families in Boston during the Boston busing crisis, which is when there was mandated desegregation busing in Boston. And this really inspired me to take a look at school segregation in Boston now and how the history of desegregation efforts influences policies today. And so these two things together led to my podcast, A Wicked Problem. And so I just wanted to give some brief historical context about what exactly the Boston busing crisis was. So it goes all the way back to Brown v. Board of Education, which made schools that were segregated by race unconstitutional. And then years and years later, unfortunately, many public school districts in the United States, Boston included, had public schools that were still very much so segregated by race. And this was, of course, not by law, but some public schools and school committees would use tricks to segregate schools by race. So where the school was located obviously played a large role. They also would claim to be segregated, but have different floors for students of different races. And eventually what happened was a group of black parents teamed up with the NAACP and filed a lawsuit against Boston Public Schools. And the result of this lawsuit was that Boston Public Schools had indeed segregated schools intentionally by race, and the mandated desegregation busing was the solution. However, this obviously didn't go over well, considering it's called the Boston Busing Crisis. And most famously, uh, the South Boston High School, which was predominantly white, and Roxbury High School, which was predominantly black, had students going in between those two high schools, and there was a lot of backlash, particularly from white families in South Boston. And so that's where a lot of these photos come from. And so this was obviously a big part of Boston history and is an important thing to consider when we're looking at desegregation policy now. So I also wanted to explain what the title of my podcast is. So a wicked problem in the public policy space is a problem that basically is extremely difficult or impossible to solve because there are a whole lot of reasons for it and a lot of the solutions for it seem to contradict each other. And I actually, in one of my interviews, someone described school segregation as a wicked problem. And plus, obviously wicked is you know Boston slang, so I thought these things kind of went well together and it was a little bit of a double meaning. So that's the logo for my podcast, and it's a five-episode podcast. Two of the episodes, episode two and episode three, are about the Boston busing crisis and are actually part of a larger podcast series I did last semester in one of my journalism classes that I highly encourage everyone to listen to as well. And then the other episodes are about current segregation, um, education policy in general, and also organizations that work in Boston to help decrease segregation in schools. And so each episode includes clips from interviews I did with academics, um, policy experts, people who were involved with the Boston busing crisis, and that's called all interspersed with my own narration. Yeah, and so I also wanted to talk a little bit about actual current segregation in Boston. So this graph is from 2019, and ProPublica, the news outlet, did a huge study with public school districts all across the country and indexed them by how much segregation there was. And the way they defined segregation, because there are multiple ways you can define it, was that there was an uneven distribution of black students and white students across schools. So the darker the color on the map, the more uneven of a distribution there was. And so you can see that they rated Boston of having a high segregation index, 
And just for a few statistics, um, in 2019, 44.9% of Boston was white, but only 14% of Boston public schools were white. And also in 2019, 22.2% of Boston's population was black, and 33% of Boston public schools were black. So another way to measure segregation, there's a very clear imbalance between the population of the city and the population of schools. And then this is, I have a little trailer from my podcast along with some recent headlines about Massachusetts and Boston and school segregation. This episode is going to take a look at the creation of the mandated busing policy used during the Boston busing crisis. Our first year plan had one thing that we greatly regretted. Boston, it was really a horror scene. Louise Day Hicks, she was a cannibal. I said, Judge Yardy, aren't you afraid they're gonna break the glass? And said, they're not gonna break the glass. I said, well, what about if they get in here? He said, that doesn't worry me. Boston public schools are still segregated. Because of the history of racial discrimination, we still live in a very segregated metropolitan region, right? There is no silver bullet that will solve it. I wish we spent more time celebrating it for our children rather than thinking that the more we get black and brown kids in the same classroom with white kids, that somehow will be a better outcome. It's a wicked problem. I'm Marla Hiller, and this is A Wicked Problem. Yeah, and just to finish up, a very shameless plug for my own podcast. So that QR code will take you to my Substack blog sort of situation. You can listen to the episodes there. Thank you. I love this, Marla. So I'm a BPS parent um, of a student in a predominantly black school. Um, and I don't know if you've looked at the METCO program um, and kind of these, these programs that are busing students out of Boston and now kind of maybe a solution to move students around in a different way outside of the city. Um, and if you've looked at that, what your thoughts are on that and how that kind of dovetails the work that you're doing. Yeah, so I definitely looked at that and part of my, the last episode I did is about METCO. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to talk to anyone who works in METCO. You know, I reached out a few times, but sometimes that just doesn't end up working. So I did talk to some people who are very pro-METCO and some people who raise concerns about students that METCO leaves behind in communities and leaves at schools that are low performing. Um, So I think it's kind of controversial a little bit But, I mean, I don't have a strong opinion about it. I think it's a solid program, but I understand the concerns about leaving students behind, too. Great job. This was awesome. And just listening to the brief clip you showed us, I really want to listen to more. Um, I had a random question about why you chose podcasts. Like, was there a reason that you chose to deliver your research in a podcast form instead of, like, a traditional research paper? Um... I think my, so I wanted to do a podcast before I decided even what it was going to be about. Um, I've made a podcast through like the BU radio station for most of my time in college. And so it's kind of just something I'm interested in and I'm interested in audio journalism. So it made sense. So I really, really enjoyed this. I'm like the rest of the audience. Um, Thinking about the numbers, you pointed out that um, Brown versus Board of Education, that at that time things were quite extreme and eventually a lawsuit was brought. And so what are the sort of target metrics? And I think that in itself is a challenging thing to define. Is there such in the Boston area or is that a disagreement? Um, I think there is a bit of disagreement. And this is another thing I've talked about in the podcast because how someone defines integration in a school can vary from person to person. Like what is the ideal racial makeup of a school is not, there isn't one answer. So when people do make desegregation policies, they often aim for a certain percentage of a certain race. And I think a lot of times they use the demographics of the area that the school is drawing from as a way to measure that. But I don't know any like specific percentages. Any other questions at all? Okay, if not, let's thank her again for a great presentation. (laughs) 